Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, this is Una Daly from CCCOER, of course, and welcome to our first webinar of fall 2019. And um, I'd like to <laughs> let you know that uh, this, this uh, particular webinar is introducing you to um, some of the things we do here at CCCOER and all of the amazing people uh, who make this possible. Um, and starting with my executive council. Um, so we're going to uh, use a couple of interactive tools today to um, illustrate uh, the work that we do. And um, we've got many speakers who are piping in. So um, the first thing we'd like to ask you to do, if possible, is tell us where you're from. We're gonna do an um, interactive map and um, there's a bit.ly here to make it a little bit easier. It's bit.ly, capital W, where, and then CCCOER all in caps. And I'm typing that into the chat window as well. So you can click on that. And if you'll just put your city and state in there, it's completely anonymous. Um, but we, it'll be fun and we will show you a map of where all of, our, all of you are located um, in, a little bit later in the webinar. All righty. Can we go on to the next slide, Lisa? All right. I want to introduce um, our not only our moderators for today, but also our new co-presidents of CCCOER, the Executive Council. And um, our first uh, co-president um, here is Lisa Young. Um, she is the faculty director for the Center for Teaching and Learning at Scottsdale Community College. She's also uh, been one of the co-leaders of the Maricopa Community College Millions Project, the OER Millions Project, which I think many of you know, and is active in uh, several other OER projects this year as well. Um, do you want to say hi, Lisa? Hi, everybody. Okay, <laughs> we'll hear more from Lisa in a moment. And then uh, second up is Sue Tashjian, who is the coordinator of instructional technology and online learning at Northern Essex Community College. She's also been a co-leader of the Massachusetts Go Open Community College movement, which has now become a statewide movement, including all higher ed. Um, and she's active on a lot of different OER projects. Sue, would you like to say hi? Hi, everyone. Sorry, my webcam is not working, so All right. you'll see a black box. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, though. Lisa and Sue are going to take us through some, um, some, uh, some activities um, in just a moment. So next slide, Lisa. All right. But behind all of those, those two amazing ladies, uh, we have a full executive council, and I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> very briefly go through uh, we the names and we're gonna let you read these later um, because we don't want to spend too much time on uh, our executive council but we've got Matthew Bloom, Cindy DeMica, Michael Mills, Gene Runyon, Kelsey Smith, Nathan Smith, and Nikki Stubbs um, along with um, our pro professional development subcommittee Philip Anaya, uh, Ted Intara Bumrung, and Suzanne Wakeham. And on our special projects committee, we have Brittany Dudak, Lori Beth Larson, and Elaine Farrelly Plorde. So uh, big team and um, helping us get all this work done and helping to support you um, in the OER work you do. Thank you, Lisa. So for those of you who this might be your first webinar, and it, it would be kind of interesting if this is your first webinar, you might indicate that in the chat window to us. Um, the first webinar with CCCOER, we do monthly webinars from August through June, um, focused on OER thought leaders, um, practitioners, uh, students, all the stakeholders involved in OER at community colleges and four-year colleges as well in universities. Um, and I think those of you who uh, have been with us before, you, you should see that this mission um, has uh, continued for a long time. One thing I would um, point out is that um, we're looking at providing more um, regional and statewide leadership for open education. We're launching some of that this fall. But ultimately, this is about helping faculty to uh, find um, high quality OER uh, to help their students be successful. 
Um, we've been doing this for over 10 years. And now I just wanted to show you a quick map. This is not, uh, this is not the interactive map, but this is a map of our members uh, throughout the country. Um, and we are in 34 states and we are very excited uh, with all of these amazing members and the projects they're doing. You can look this up on our website. Um, you can go under about on the cccoer.org website and uh, look at members. And when you click on our members, you can see what their OER projects are. So our new members this summer, Chippewa Valley Technical College in Wisconsin, Des Moines Area Community College in Iowa, Pima Community College in Arizona, and East Los Angeles College in California. So welcome to our new members um, uh, who just joined us this summer. All right, Lisa, I'm going to turn this over to you now. Fantastic. Um, I'm back and I'm glad to have you all here and thank you. I know a number of you have already introduced yourself in the chat window. Um, if you have not, please do so. And um, that way everybody can get to know each other. And we really wanted to make this kind of social and fun and interactive. And so um, one of the things we wanted to do was look at where are we, where are we located, and you know who's on this webinar right now. So I'm going to see if technology will work for us. And I'm going to do some fancy sharing here now and see what happens. <laughs> And you should see a map of the United States. Can you? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Um, so doesn't your phone always ring when you're doing a webinar? <laughs> there we go. So this is where all of you are in the United States. Now, we may also have some members from Canada. Our map isn't reflecting in Canada. Um, but we just thought this was a great way to see where we're all calling from. So some of you are on lunch, and some of you are almost ready to go home, and we have people in the middle here, and um, we're able to see where we're all calling from. We definitely need to have, have some work to do on membership in the middle of the country a bit, but we're so happy that all of you are able to join us today. So now I'm gonna do the fancy sharing back, so let's see how this works. And there we go. So um, I'm going to drive and um, introduce my co-president, Sue, who's going to be sharing an activity with you um, in Padlet so that you can get um, a good idea of what we do at CCC OER. So Sue, I'm going to do the fancy sharing. Una is going to be putting the URL into the chat window, and Sue's going to take it away. All right, thank you, Lisa. Um, so CCCOER offers support to colleges in many ways, and we thought this would be a fun way to show the type of support that we offer. So we're presenting the topics on a Padlet, and Una um, just typed that into the chat. So Padlet's an application used to create an online bulletin board that you can display information for any topic. They're great to use for teaching, um, for collaborating, gathering ideas, sharing them. So it's a living, breathing web, web page that anyone can add links to, YouTube videos, files, and images. So please, like Lisa said, we wanted to make this interactive. So please add your comments, likes, ideas, links, and we'll share this out with you all um, after, the, after the webinar. You don't need to be logged in to participate. And to add a comment, web link, image, or video, just click on the plus sign at the bottom of the column. So we've split the columns up into different areas, and um, members of our team are going to present um, the different areas. So I'd like to start off with professional development and uh, Matthew Bloom and Nathan Smith are going to talk about the webinars and the professional development opportunities that we offer. So Nate. All right, yep. I, hello everyone. You wanna, I can start out, Matthew, or you wanna? No, you can go, go ahead. All right, so um, 
So first thing I want to do is if you if you have the Padlet there, um, there should be a link in um, one of the comments, and I can put that same link in our chat. Basically, this is the web page that provides um, that'll provide all of the um, information about upcoming webinar series. Oh, I see Una put one in there. She beat me to it. Um, but the um, so we're just going to run through really quickly kind of the um, the topics that we're going to do um, this uh, this semester this uh, fall and um, I don't know, Matthew you want to start with uh, yours and then maybe we'll uh, and I'll do the middle two and then you can yeah. then you can finish it off yeah sounds great so uh, yeah we're really excited uh, we have on September eighteenth we have a copyright and licensing with OER. Uh, webinar. Uh, right now we have um, a couple of librarians who are committed to it and we also have an, an expert on Creative Commons licensing from none other than Creative Commons itself. So we're really excited about that. We hope to um, to present it kind of as an interesting engaging discussion about some of the intricacies of copyright and licensing but we will start out with a very brief overview of, of how copyright and licensing fit into open resources and um, then you know, proceed through slightly more complex uh, nuanced discussions related to intellectual property policies and how to remix content and things like that. And the goal is to have it uh, be very much like a discussion or a podcast style discussion to keep it engaging and hopefully not uh, bore everybody with, with what sometimes can be a little bit dry content. So we're looking forward to getting that exciting. Cool. And then um, in uh, on October 16th, we'll have a discussion that'll be led by Suzanne um, talking about equity and diversity and inclusion in OER. This is going to have a kind of faculty focus, um, a pedagogy focus, um, looking at sort of equitable representation, minority groups, indigenous and culturally responsive teaching. Uh, a couple of uh, guests that have been in, invited to that. So that discussion ought to be um, really interesting. Then on November 13th, um, I will be leading a discussion on OER impact research. We've got a couple of different um, researchers who are going to join me. We'll talk about some of the best studies that are out there. Um, we'll, uh, we're, but we're also going to talk about like research designs and what data institutions should be collecting right now. How what some lessons learned from collection of data and how um, partnerships could be developed to explore um, studies of OER impact. Yeah, and then following up with that um, in early December, December 4th, specifically, we are going to have a webinar that features some, uh, features a recap of a couple of the major open education conferences uh, that are happening this fall. So a recap and then reflections from some folks who attended. Uh, those two conferences are, first of all, the Open Education Conference, kind of the premier North American um, you know, Open Education Conference, which happens to be in Phoenix, Arizona, right in our backyard here. Um, but uh, there's that conference, and then in late November, there's the Open Education Global Conference in Milan, Italy. And so, not we know that not all of our members are able to make it to one or both of those conferences. So it's going to be a good opportunity to reach out to some of our community members who were able to attend and ask them to share their reflections or maybe recap some presentations that um, that they were involved in. And one of the things that I'd like to just follow up with is that you know, this this webinar series is just one in a series of you know years that we've been doing this on the CCC OER website. If you go to the uh, webinar, if you just go to cccoer.org/webinar, you can actually search through um, the archives of all the webinars that we've done. We've got webinars dating back to 2012 um in this resource so i strongly recommend checking it out because you'll see that there are a lot of different topics that we've covered over the years um many of them where i was directly involved but i'm really uh happy to see all this stuff in fact there's some things in there that just looking at it yesterday i was like man i gotta go back to look at this stuff from 2013 so um no it's really exciting and that's kind of the reason why we do these webinars is is to engage with the community a little bit and try to 
uh, engage discussions about topics that people find interesting. And so we're always looking for webinar topic suggestions. And so if you ever have any, please feel free to reach directly out to me or reach out to Nathan. I'll go ahead and offer that um, for you. And then, no problem. Um, and we're like uh, really looking forward to, you know, future participation. All right, thank you so much, Nathan and Matthew. Uh, we're gonna move on to the website. Um, the CCCOER website um, uh, provides many resources and I'm gonna turn it over to Liz, Elaine, and Kelsey who will talk about um, the website and the plans for the website for the coming year. Um, thanks, Sue. Yeah, I think this is Liz from um, CCCOER. I think I'm gonna be doing most of the talking. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the resources we have. So if you do go to CCC OER, we have a number of tabs at the top. The first one is the Learn tab, um, and that talks about, you know, why open education and talks about the benefits for students. Yeah, the Learn tab right there. Benefits for students and faculty. Open licenses talks about the Creative Commons licenses. Uh, Find OER has a number of repositories um, by category, so you can do subject-specific repositories, you know, search for textbooks, journals, media, etc. Adopt OER talks about different steps you want to take, like from reviewing to, you know, making sure you get the materials approved by your college. Uh, OER research talks about um, links to OER research, like the textbook cost, impact, and quality of OER. And the, um, the helpful resources is a number of links curated by our executive council about OER, OER researching, planning, adoption, evaluation and advocacy, authoring OER, open pedagogy, policy, just um, all kinds of links. Uh, the next tab over is the plan tab. This has links to help you set goals and design actions to achieve your goals. Um, so to, in, in the articles for planning and an institutional level, um, plan, ideas for faculty trying to start or grow in OER awareness or adoption at your institution and ideas on how to involve students and then um, some professional development ideas. The, um, the OER degrees tab is up next. But yeah, there you go. Um, so OER degrees, also called Z degrees or zero textbook cost degrees or Z creds if you're in a Canada or the UK. They're pathways to a certificate or degree where all the classes have um, either use OER or have zero textbook cost for the class. So we have different articles about talking about large scale projects, talks about achieving the dream. Um, and then there's also degree planning has tips for planning the degree pathway and re resources for planning. Um, case studies is um, features 12 case studies from across from community colleges across the US and they talk about how they implemented their pathways and motivation challenges results and etc. Then the last thing I want to talk about on the website and that's research um, is under get involved is the at the bottom there the 2019 open education conferences. This will take you to a spreadsheet and um, Kelsey Smith, who couldn't join us today, but um, she's on our executive council. She maintains a spreadsheet of all of the conferences that are mentioned on our email list and she's keeping updated with the dates, location, um, and, and uh, links. So that's a really good resource if you are able to uh, you know, attend some conferences. All right, Liz, um, and Liz, are you going to be talking about the guest blogs or is Nikki? Well, I'll talk about um, a couple of special blogs we have. Um, okay. If do you still have, if you still have, uh, well, it's fine. On the, we have um, student impact stories. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, if you look on that green, uh, um, box there that links to um, student impact stories. So CCCOR, we interviewed students who have been directly impacted by the Zero Textbook Cost Degree Initiative, which was launched in spring of 2016 in California. So we've got a few, we have more, more to come soon. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> and then the other other blog I wanted to talk about was um, if you go back to the main page, yeah. Yeah, the other one, um, the equity, diversity, and inclusion blog series. We've currently got nine blog posts with more lined up. The most recent post was um, Ursula Pike, who I believe is here today at Austin Community College, talked about taking OER off, off campus and um, how an equity is more than saving money. And, and she talks about how she spoke at Building Bridges um, Community Dialogue Gathering in Austin, Texas. And um, we also have one from a librarian at CUNY um, talking about the uh, the adopting OER at the CUNY and how they involved um, made sure to keep an EDI lens on their program. Okay, I think I think Nikki is here to talk about. Hi everyone, I'm Nikki here. So I'll give you an update on what we have via the guest blogs so far this year. Um, we have posted about seven OER summit postings so far in 2019, and that actually doesn't include our Open Education Week roundup um, that we have in March. Um, and that blog post um, on its own has about five days worth of OER information for everyone to explore. So um, really, if you check out the Open Education Week roundup, usually there is something for everyone um, on that blog post. and Personally, it normally takes me several weeks just to go through everything after um, Open Ed Week is done and, and um, to have time to review everything. We've also had some um, excellent thought-provoking pieces as well as one that was recently posted around equity and openness um, earlier this month. And then during the late spring, we had another, uh, another post that was really well, well received, which is the when is open to open, um, piracy in education and rethinking test banks. So this one was a hot conversation on the listserv. If you were um, on there during, during the um, late spring timeframe, um, I'm sure most of you probably remember that. So um, this actual blog post was an excellent summary of the thoughts and the opinions that were given from the from the, um, from the community. And it also has some really great suggestions um, from the community of practice on kind of how to think about um, those test banks and, and what to do going forward. And earlier this year, we also had a post on change leadership as well as bookstore involvement in OER projects. Um, both of those we, we can probably all relate to in some way. And I do want to mention that we are interested in having more thought pieces for our blog posting. So um, if you are interested in participating for an idea for a post, or if you have um, um, a, a, a post that you think we should um, kind of summarize, or an event that we should summarize, please let us know um, via that guest blog form that is um, in, the, um, in the Padlet. Um, or you can just let us know in the Padlet. You can just add it as a comment as well. All right. Um, thank you, Nikki. I'm going to talk about the email listserv. Um, so the email group is, I would say, one of the most um, vibrant email listservs that I have ever been involved in. And based on the results of the 2019 members survey, 95% of our members found that the community email to be the most valuable support that CCCOER offers to members. Um, so CCO, CCOER provides, this was one of the quotes, an instant community with whom we can ask questions and share ideas. You don't need to be a member of CCCOER to join the listserv. And I always share the link um, to sign up for the listserv with faculty and staff during our trainings. Um, Lisa, could you um, click on the um, community listserv? Yep. All right. Um, so 
thanks to Dr. Larry Green, um, a mathematics faculty at Lake Tahoe Community College for creating an index of the shared um, email group. So the index is um, organized alphabetically by subject area and it's constantly being updated by Dr. Green. He even provided a video walkthrough to introduce the index and to also explain how it's organized. Um, if you join um, the email group, I would recommend creating a rule in your inbox. Um, although now you can um, select, because this is such a high volume email list, you can select your email preference. Um, you can select an abridged email, one summary email of all new activity per day, a digest email where you can get up to 25 messages in a single email, and then all email is sending each message as it arrives. So those new options are great for people who don't want to be constantly getting the, um, you know, all the emails as they arrive. Um, so if you have any quotes and thoughts about the email list, um, add them to the Padlet. Um, and I know that um, you'll definitely find this list to be great when you're looking for support on starting a new OER initiative, um, policy, strategy, any of the current um, issues that are going on, you'll get um, current up-to-date information from you know, all of the people on the list. All right, let's see. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Cindy, who's gonna talk about new member services. Hey everyone, um, so new member services is a um, new thing that's going on starting this year and we want to reach out to our new members to find out how we can better help them and one of the things that is sent out is um, a welcome email from Liz um, on behalf of um, Una and Sue and Lisa, myself, and you're, one of the things you get is the new members toolkit, and I am going to put a link to that toolkit in the chat, um, so if people want to take a look at it, if you haven't already, um, there's a lot of great information on there, and one thing I'm soliciting is going to be feedback on that to find out how we can potentially improve upon it. I think it's great. Um, but I'm also biased because um, I've been looking at it. So we want fresh eyes and we want to know what we can do to make it better for our new members. Um, I'm also going to be reaching out to our new members as well to find out how um, you want us to help you um, when you join and what you're looking for when you join. Um, we know that everybody is at different stages in their OER journey. Um, so I'm looking for that feedback. And I know that they're already talking, our new members are talking and having consultations with um, Una and Sue and Liz. And this is um, just a little bit more laid back in um, seeing how things are going and getting to know you and how, like I said, how we can better help our new members get around the OER commun community. So those are some of the new member services that we're rolling out this year and hoping to get everybody better connected in the community. So I am going to now turn it over to Lisa and Outreach. Thank you, Cindy. Hello. Um, in terms of outreach, you've seen that we do a lot of virtual outreach, but we also do in-person outreach. And with that, um, members of CCC OER will often band together and do panel presentations or workshops at a number of the different conferences. We also have meetups at the conference, so the CCC OER community can get together and meet each other. So You'll be, you'll be seeing something about the Open Ed Conference that's going to be um, where I am in Arizona in October. And we'll work to get our membership together so everyone can meet each other and see all the people that we communicate with and see on the listserv um, or on the blog posts or what have you. And so we are, uh, we are available to do con presentations and workshops. Um, just this year, Una and I did a couple together and um, I know Sue has, has done some, and so it's just a great way to um, be able to help serve the open community and help others kind of get moving and get their initiatives going, and also to, um, to and provide that expertise 
And then also when we go to conferences, being able to share about what CCC OER does and this amazing professional learning network that um, has been established that we all contribute to and have benefited, benefited from. And so that's what I've got on outreach. All right, thank you, Lisa. And thank you, everyone. And if you have any comments, save the link for the Padlet, and feel free to add them. Um, we'd be, we'd, we look forward to hearing from you. And I'm working on sharing, as you can probably see. Um, let me make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be here. All right. You should still see the Padlet, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Technology challenge, the Zoom dropdown kept going where I needed to go. All right, everybody, we're gonna play a game. Is everybody ready? Yes. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna play Kahoot and learn more about why CCCOER does what we do. And so to that end, um, we would like you, I'm gonna lower my volume so you don't hear music twice. We are going to ask you to either use the Kahoot app if you have it on your phone, or go to www.kahoot.it, which is in the chat window. And when you get to that, um, URL or your Kahoot app, please enter this game pin, which is 269645, and put in a name. You can be your name, it can be someone else's name, you choose. Um, but go ahead and go to the app or the website and put in the game pin. And we got people coming up, which is awesome seeing all these names coming up on our Kahoot. I'm going to give it one more moment before we move on. We've got a lot of players. Look at this. It's working, guys. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Still have people rolling in. All right, everybody's in. So we are going to get started. Or lots of people are going to roll in with that game pin 269645. But we're going to start. So the first question is, how much has the price of college textbooks increased since 1998? And so how much has the price of college textbooks increased since 1998. You have four options. The red triangle box is 212%. The blue diamond box is 133%. The green square box is 317%. And they're showing you the answer. Um, the answer is 183%. So since 1998, the price of college textbooks has increased um, 183%. And now when we look at our leaderboard, Iron Man is <laughs> the lead for this game. Well done, Iron Man. So now we're going to talk to Brittany a little bit about how that relates to what CCC OER does. Brittany, take it away. Hi everyone, um, my name is Brittany Judek. I am the library coordinator at Colorado Community Colleges Online. Um, and so according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics report for the CPI uh, index from 2019, over the last 21.5 years, college textbooks have increased 183%. It's also important to mention that tuition has also increased 188%. Um, what I, thought, what I did think was very interesting was that college textbook expenditures have decreased a marginal amount in the last year, 3.8% to be exact since July 2018. Um, and I have to speculate that that has something to do with open educational resources, um, perhaps influencing the market a little bit. 
Um, important to this conversation is also student debt. According to the Federal Reserve, as of the fourth quarter of 2018, 44.7 million borrowers have over $1.5 trillion in student loan debt. And something that was actually very surprising to me was that 11.4% are either delinquent or defaulting, which is 90 days past due in their student loan debt. So one final thought. If you haven't already, I strongly encourage you to look into Dr. Sarah Ro Goldrick Robb's work at the Hope Center at Temple University for Real College. Um, I've personally found it extremely helpful in working with OER in communicating the why of what we're doing. Um, these numbers seem kind of big and unmanageable and kind of not realistic, uh, to be honest, but the, uh, the work that we're all doing in open educational resources has a real effect on students and families, and um, her work there is uh, very helpful in helping to explain why we're doing what we're doing. Brittany, thank you so much for providing the why. It's, it, we, we all do what we do for different reasons, but you provided such a compelling um, case for the work we're doing and the hope that we're moving the needle, um, which is really exciting. Thank you. So back to the game, everybody. What are some ways diversity can be introduced using OER? There are four options. Leverage-enabled pedagogy, remix and revise resources, curate resources or all of the above you have 10 seconds to provide your answer look at those coming in and you are all correct leveraging enabled pedagogy remixing and revising resources and curating resources are all ways that diversity can be introduced using oer and in the lead, Iron Man is still in the lead with Liz trailing just a little bit behind and then Brittany, Nick, and MMS. So let's see what Quill has to say. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so one of the main aims of open education when I started was to help remove barriers to education. And we thought about that as equity. But equity, is, removing the textbook cost is, is um, kind of an equalizer in terms of everybody getting better access to education, but it doesn't mean that it's equity because while you take away the cost for one student, you take them away for all students, which is lovely, but that's equality. Um, so when we talk about equity and OER, we talk about the different ways that we can use open education um, and open enabled pedagogy and remixing and bringing in student voices to the work to help students find their um, their own voice in the educational setting and see their culture reflected there and see their values reflected there and that's all very important in the setup of equity in education. CCCOER has been working on this for the past um, couple of years. You saw earlier the blog postings that I was going to direct you to where we started to have several um, thought-provoking conversations about how do our how does OER play with this equ equity conversation um, and it is a much bigger conversation than let's remove the cost of textbooks that's just a beginning place um, removing the cost is the start but we have to go deeper and further with our resources in order to truly meet the needs of students um, of diversity and students who have traditionally been less well represented in our completion numbers at our colleges. So join us at CCCOER for those conversations, both in our listserv, in the webinar that's coming up, um, and in our conference presentations. Thank, Thank you, you, Quill. And it's interesting, in our first year of um, the Maricopa Millions Project, we had an opportunity to do focus groups with students. And one of the things that struck me the most was a comment from a student who said, the textbook was made for me. And that's really what it's, what it's about when we're talking about equity. And so thank you, Quill. We are moving on to the next phase of the game. What are some things that can be a result of OER? Enrollment in a greater number of credits. Innovation and customization of engaging learner materials. Increased student success for all of the above.
All righty. All of the above, that is correct. Um, those are all things that can be a result of OER. Clearly, I am not a professional quiz maker. And in the lead, Iron Man stays strong. And we still have MMS, uh, MMS and Liz in the lead there in first, second, and third place. And then Nathan and Arbex have moved on to the top five. So let's talk to Suzanne a little bit here. Suzanne, can you tell us a little bit more about the why? Absolutely. So um, yeah, Im improving student success is actually part of the CCC OER mission. So this ties in um, pretty directly. And I think a lot of times when we talk about um, OER, the, the cost factor is, is a big part of it, but there's so much more to it. And there's been some really great research done about how using OER improves student success. Quill mentioned um, quite a really uh, quite a few really good factors about equity um, and helping students really see themselves in the in the content. Um, and so the the enrollment and success are, are really integral to getting students through um, their educational experience and on onward um, to bigger things in their lives. Uh, and the the third one there customizing I think is a really interesting one because we tend to not talk about it that often is how can we as professionals take these resources and make them our own, make them the students' resources, which um, as, as you mentioned was exactly what students wanna see. They wanna see themselves in the educational experience. And so CCCOER gives us a nice platform to talk about those things and share ideas. Excellent, thank you, Suzanne. And I think that's what really, my, my favorite, there's so many parts of CCC OER that I just love being a part of, but the sharing of ideas and having these discussions, I think, are key and that we're able to do them not only in person, but also virtually and through our webinars, through our listserv, through our blogs. It's really something that you don't see a lot of other places and we have a really great community to help us all grow. We're back in the game, everybody. True or false, Creative Commons is a leader in ensuring resources are licensed to be shared. And, um, Creative Commons is a leader in ensuring resources are licensed to be shared. And so now, um, here we go. Iron Man is still in the lead. You are quick with your answers and they are correct. Um, MMS has come in second. Liz Yada has come in third. Arbex fourth and Sarah H fifth. That's the end of the quiz, but it's not the end of learning more about CCC OER because James is going to tell us a little bit of the why of leadership. Hey, everybody. James Glop of Girls Clyde College of the Canyons. Uh, great to be here. Thanks, uh, Lisa and Sue, for putting this together. This is a lot of fun. Um, you know, the, the, I, I'm going to really riff off of the, the Creative Commons question. You know, when we talk about leadership, Creative Commons, of course, is the leader in providing the legal framework for us, the structure for us, and that is so essential. But still, we have to do the the frontline work and everybody in CCC OER really is doing that frontline work and that's being a leader. If we think about um, doing the daily work of advocacy, encouraging faculty, searching repositories for our faculty, applying for grants, delivering workshops to one or two people or nobody shows up for your workshop, you know, that's the work that we're doing on a daily basis, I think, uh, uh, or we aspire to do that work on a daily basis and we're looking for people to give us ideas about how to do that and uh, share slides and share resources and share tips about uh, how to get more than zero people to come to our workshops. Uh, the CCC OER community is the place where you can find all of those people and all of those resources and get great examples of, of how you can implement those things on your own campus or in your community, in your region or state. Uh, and, and one of the things that I love about CCC OER is that everyone can be a leader. Um, uh, CCC OER is welcoming to faculty, to administrators, to staff, to community members, uh, people from higher education, 
uh, people from uh, foundations, people from uh, uh, higher education commissions and so on. So uh, you can be a leader from any point in the organization and any type of organization. I, and you can jump in at any time and, and, and the community is incredibly welcoming. I can think of, uh, gosh, a lot of people on the, on the webinar today. Uh, and I'm looking at Amanda and Suzanne and Jennifer uh, from California who, you know, three or four years ago, really were not involved in OER and and now they've gotten involved in CCC OER and OER generally and they're seen as leaders at their institutions and leaders across the state and probably beyond the state. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, the community of, 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 uh, of like-minded uh, heroes that uh, CCC OER introduces you to is, is uh, invaluable, priceless. Uh, and I just want to say also that uh, all of the opportunities that that uh, our, our, our colleagues have identified earlier in the webinar are opportunities for you to identify yourself publicly uh, in, in your leadership role, whether it's writing a blog post, hosting a webinar, participating in a webinar, contributing to the listserv. Uh, those are great ways to get noticed if that's what, what you're interested in. But I think generally most people here are interested in doing the work, rolling up their sleeves and going to that workshop with one, maybe one person. Um, and the final thing I'll, I'll say about leadership that I, I hope we're all thinking about is how to uh, encourage the next generation of leaders. We have to get our students involved, whether they're graduate students or undergraduate students. We have to get our students involved as interns, as advocates, as workers, as, as, as users and creators of OER in, in their own right. And those are people who are going to uh, come up through the system thinking that OER is the default and that's uh, the real opportunity we have to uh, to exercise leadership and that is making ourselves invisible and taking taking this away from being a movement and being something new and just making it the default so back to you Lisa James thank you so much and I think you really um, did a great job of touching on the leadership that CCC OER provides but also the leaders in OER that CCC OER helps grow um, including myself and so many others that I've seen. The scaffolding, the support, the resources, tools, and all of you who contribute. And whenever there is a question that you all, we, we, we all chime in and provide our knowledge and having that cumulative knowledge really helps us when we're new to this, to be able to lead at our institution. And I think that is one of the most special things is that CCC OER really helps to grow the OER leaders in the community colleges because of all of our members. And it's pretty cool. Um, so thank you for playing the game. I'm going to switch us back to the PowerPoint. And I'm going to turn it over to Una. Thank you, Lisa. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, I think everyone said it all. <laughs> but what, one piece I want to um, uh, make a little bit of an emphasis about is that CCCOER is part of the Open Ed Consortium, which is a global um, network of open educators around the world in, uh, with members in over 40 countries. CCCOER is a big part of the OEC, actually, at about 30% of the members. But um, there's opportunities for you to hear about what's happening around the world um, in open education and where, when, when possible to attend the annual conference uh, for Open Education Global, which is it's somewhat like the Open Ed Conference, which happens in the United States uh, and sometimes in Canada, but it attracts people from many countries. And so you'll see a much wider um, set of presentations and um, and have a, an opportunity for conversations with people from all over the world. Um, this year it's in Italy in November, uh, the end of November. Uh, last year it was in the Netherlands. Uh, the year before it was in South Africa. And so it's, it rotates based on um, the OEC members um, who uh, bid to have it at their institution. So we're very excited to have it in Milan. 
uh, Italy this this November at the Polytechnic um, Polytechnic University there. Um, so I think that's all I will say. Please do read these membership benefits. These are on our website as well, and uh, there's our um, our web. Uh, address if you would like to look into becoming a member um, and we'd we'd be very happy to have you um, all right. <laughs> I guess these are my slides too um, so you know once again there's various opportunities for getting involved if you go to our website cccoar.org that's where the community email is that's where membership is that's where those conferences are that Kelsey Smith maintains for us um, so a list of conferences this fall coming up in the spring along with the due dates for submissions so it's really a helpful uh, one-stop shopping for open ed conferences or conferences that have a big focus on open ed um, and uh, we talked about the guest bl blog posts. Nikki uh, and Liz both mentioned those so um, we'd love to have you contribute as well and I think we went over this uh, earlier today. Um, and so you can just see, uh, we hope that you'll join us in September to, um, for that discussion on copyright and licensing with OER. Back to you, Lisa and Sue. Well, thank you everybody. We'd love to answer some questions. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window and we can address them. Yes, thank you, everyone. That was fun. Thank you for interacting with us. Yes. Thanks for letting us try something new. One thing that I wanted to share was I was reading through some of the quotes on the um, the survey, the member survey, and I liked this one. So the people within the CCC OER feel like your own team. It's where you can share your failures and successes around OER and know that someone is always going to be cheering you on at the finish line. And that's really how I feel about um, my involvement with CCCOER. And I echo that. I, I don't see any, are there any questions coming in on the chat? Sue, are you able to see that? Um, so Michelle asked, where is the leadership for OER at the K through 12 level? Um, and sorry, who asked that, Sue? Michelle Smith. Michelle, you know, thank you, Michelle, for that question. Um, we um, we are starting to work on issues around dual enrollment, so high school dual enrollment. We know that that is um, a huge priority for both colleges and uh, high schools, and um, OEC is looking at also um, opening up its membership through to K through 12. So I'd love to talk with you about that offline. It's something that's in process and we realize the need for this. This is not something that's limited to higher ed. So thank you for asking that. Um, I think that was a uh, question. Thank you everyone for attending. Thanks for playing and uh, participating in our first webinar of the 2019 school year. And I want to say thanks to Lisa and Sue who organized this and, uh, and made it so interactive and, and fun to play. So thanks everyone and hope to see you again soon. Yeah, have a great start to the semester. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.